All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to once again thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe, and click that notification button. You can follow me on Twitter. Put a hashtag speak down there in the comment section, please. Hashtag, hey, we want our 10K. And we are going to go ahead and get into this PPP4, the P4 loan program that is going to be discussing who gets the PPP again. If you got it once or twice, you can get it three times. Yes, indeed, you can. So we are going to go over that. It's a very interesting situation here for small businesses who are very much in need of money still during these economic times. And now we got new text on it and I'm bringing it forward to you so that you will be in the in know before the funds get what? Exhausted again. So stay in tune, click that notification button and like and subscribe so that you don't get left out of being exhausted of the being an exhausted funds area when your time comes for this money to come through. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and I'm going to go into the text that we have just found on the Paycheck Protection Program, P4, round three. Here we go. Yeah. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and dive in. It's right here that we're looking at the new information on the PPP Prioritized Protection Program Act. It's Senators Ben Cardin, Chris Coons, and Jean Shaheen. As you can see, that I'm, I'll be reading it along with you. I'm not going to go over all of it. I went over much of it in my video yesterday. If you want to go back and look at that, the PPP. Okay, so if we look up here, um, we, we can see that the senators, uh, that we, which we have three senators, Cardin, I'm going to underline Cardin, Coons, and Jean Shaheen, are the ones that are going to be putting this program together for you. Uh, the problem that they're seeing was the businesses hardest hit by COVID-19 pandemic are still in dire need. All of this discusses about how severe losses have been made, credit go scores are going down, uh, supply chain, all that fun stuff is in this part of the text right here. Okay, so we go down a little bit where we go ahead and see the solution to the problem, which is the solution that we're all looking for here. Um, and I will draw that the Prioritized Paycheck Protection Program or P4 loan. The bill authorizes new lending under PPP4 loan subset. PPPs are borrowers, self-employed, or have 100 or fewer employees. This is going to be giving us the uh, qualifications and eligibility that you're going to be needing for your business in order to apply for this. Uh, shall it go through the Senate and pass, which it should because it's a PPP. We know we got bipartisan support much more uh, tight gripped on the PPP than we do the idle due to the fraud and stuff that was uh, committed with the idle. A lot more of that was done with the EIDL than it was with the uh, PPP when it was given to the private banks, which is what they're looking to do here. Once again, give to the private banks. And if you've already got a PPP loan, this is good information for you as well as those who didn't. I'm pretty sure you're going to apply too, as long as you don't, as long as you can show a, a loss. But the bill authorizes the lending, new lending under PPP4 loans, subset PPP4 are for borrowers that are self-employed or have 100 or fewer employees. So self-employed businesses, uh, if you have 100, and few, 100 or fewer employees and you have demonstrated a loss of revenue of 50% or more due to the pandemic. And when they say due to the pandemic, they're looking to be that timeline, that time frame within the, within the pandemic, within the timeline of the uh, COVID-19, which is 2020 and 2021, I do believe. Due to the pandemic compared to a relevant period, so your losses will have to be shown during the pandemic time. Borrowers must have fully used the, the initial PPP or be on pace to use the funding, specifically P4 loans. Okay, so may be as large as two and a half times the monthly payroll cost, just under initial PPP loans, but may not be any larger than $2 million. So it looks like they're going to be capping it at $2 million again, kind of like they did for the EIDL. Affiliated businesses with separate locations may pursue separate P4 loans, but in aggregate loans may not exceed $2 million. So it looks like uh, if you have another location, you can get another $2 million for that separate businesses. But you're going to have to give more. It's going to have to be a whole different application for it. So it's not all just going to be here. Boom, how many businesses do you got? Here's $2 million for that one, $4 million for that one. It's going to be separately, and uh, we're, they're going to go forward with that. Okay, next we're going to go with, it's going to allow borrowers to apply for forgiveness as early as eight weeks after the loan is dispersed, and they have full, fulfilled payroll requirements. Rather make them wait until, it should say rather than make them wait, but rather make them wait until the earlier of 24 weeks or December 31st, which would needlessly increase the cost of the loan as interest occurs, tying up money that could be deployed for paychecks. So they're going to make it quickly to be quickly dispersed. So maybe you may have to pay the interest on the loan, 
We're not sure about that exactly how that's going to work, but you may have to pay the interest. The, gov- the government might say, we're giving the money for the funds, but we're not going to pick up the interest. And so if the interest accrues over eight weeks, it'll be a lot less than 24 weeks, three times less. So that's pretty cool. Okay. And then the next one says, if you're not eligible to publicly trade companies, so publicly trade companies, stocks and stuff like that, if you're a huge, big company uh, if, or in there, you're not going to be qualified for it. This is for smaller of the smallest businesses. So we'll go to the next one, except as otherwise mentioned, are subject to the same terms and conditions and forgiveness as the initial PPP loans. Uh, it looks like if you've already gotten a loan, it's going to be the same terms and conditions. So if you were qualified for that loan, you should be qualified for this one is what they're saying. And it should be pretty, pretty simple and, and quick. It was kind of easier for the second PPP. If you all remember, it was easier to get the second one than it was the first and first one. You had to go through a few more hoops and ladders uh, than the second one because they already had your information, which made it easier for them to go ahead and qualify you. So let's go on down. Provide lenders a minimum processing fee of 2500 per loan, uh, PPP and P4 to ensure lenders do not lose money by processing small loans or cherry picker larger loans. So what the government, it looks like they're going to do is go ahead and say, look, if you go ahead and uh, qualify these loans, no matter if it's a $2,000 loan or a $2 million loan, the lender is looking to receive $2,500 for lending the money out to you so that they're not wasting their time and efforts on the bigger loans because they're going to make more money with that. I get it. We, we all understand why you want to go after the bigger ones because you'll make more money. But this is saying, well, we're going to give $2,500. There's going to be a minimum processing fee. Now, will that, it says provide lenders minimum processing fee. So it looks like the government is actually, feds are going to pick up that check and, uh, and let that one go ahead and slide through with that. So that's uh, understandable. We're going to go down. Okay, to increase uh, P4 assistance to underserved businesses, the bill reserves lesser of $25 billion or 20% of PPP funds for employees with ten, employees of 10 or fewer. <clears throat> so it looks like a $25 billion up front is going to be deposited just for the smaller businesses, the 20%, uh, the lower end businesses, which is really cool. They did this in the second one, and it went over really well. They even stopped PPP for a second for a moment in the second round uh, to make sure that the smaller businesses did get funded. So it looks like they're going to be doing the same thing and literally set it money aside for the smaller business, smaller or small businesses to get funded as well and making them a priority in this, which is great. Uh, with 10 or fewer employees, along with priority processing for P4 loans for such firms, harmonized with priority processing for underserved and rural borrowers, the bill also requires the SBA within five days to issue guidance as required uh, by the CARES Act. Here we go once again, going over the CARES Act, which is also your idle $10,000 grant. So when, when they put that in there, could this go forward? And if you got your $10,000 via or the, you know, the remainder of your $10,000 via through here, would you accept that as your $10,000 idle grant? Um, I think 99% of the people, 100% of the people would say, yep, we get it. We got it. Let's wash our hands. Let's be done with this. Let's say, hey, yeah. we got our 10K. You know what I'm saying? So that uh, be, having the CARES Act, just yeah. the text put in this is a very big thing, um, which instructs lenders to give priority loan processing and disbursement to the underserved and rural borrowers, including veterans. Uh, it also requires the SBA to update the PPP loan application to collect demographic information of the PPP. Okay, now we can see the bottom of this. Great. The impact that they are looking for this to have uh, is delivering support to endangered small businesses and nonprofits quickly. Now, endangered small businesses, we don't know exactly what they mean by endangered. The text is very important when it comes to congressional bills and congressional uh, letterheads. So when they say endangered, they're going to have to go ahead and define that in the article in the bill that they write, like endangered, subsection, blah, 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 means this. So that would be another piece of uh, text that we're going to need to uh, find out exactly how this goes because the text matters. Every word has to be accounted for, especially when you're dealing with uh, 25, 25 billion just for 20%. So if they're saying 25 billion at 20% of PPP funds, so 25 billion is 20%, that would be they're looking to get $125 billion 
for this if we did the math on it. We're looking at $125 billion to be put forward for this uh, round of PPP. Okay, so uh, other proposals have been put forward that establish new funds or new relief programs because of an infrastructure of 5,000 plus participating lenders. So there's now 5,000 plus participating lenders. That's a lot of lenders in this. So uh, it would be quick and easier and more people would get it faster because you'd have a lot more lenders working on the process of distributing these loans to you, including community development, financial institutions, CDFIs, and minority deposit institutions, MDIs, that focus on underserved communities. PPP is positioned to quickly deliver another round of relief in a matter of weeks, which hopefully is, it looks like it's going to be happening soon because they're already delivering new and new information on it and getting their ducks in a row here for you so that you can get those business loans and grants via PPP forgiven, as well as maybe, you know what I'd like to see forgiven would be the idle loans forgiven, or at least the majority of it or some part, portion of that forgiven as well during this time and quit quit delivering the interest down low, get those deferments for them as well for the small businesses in need. And uh, hopefully we can see all these things take, take a peaceful transition and uh, we can continue supporting and uh, moving forward in our small businesses. So hopefully this helps you guys. Uh, like, subscribe, and click that notification button. And a shout out to my boy Jason McElhome who's been working hard on this stuff too for all everybody out there. So, uh, you know, Sometimes you don't see those roots, what's behind go, what's going on behind the scenes in order for, you know, the, our, our staff and the people that are helping all of us uh, get this information. But shout out to Jason McElhone for the, all the hard work he does with uh, his, his channel as well. So guys, like, subscribe, and can somebody say, hey, we still want our 10K. Yeah.